Liverpool are losing superstar manager Jurgen Klopp and they are absolutely smashing it so far in the 23-24 season, sitting top of the Premier League in the final of a Carabao Cup and in the knockout stages of the Europa League. So why on earth would they need a rebuild? Well, that's because we're not only going to be getting rid of Jurgen Klopp, we're also going to be saying goodbye to the Egyptian king, Mohamed Salah, and to captain, leader, legend, Virgil van Dijk as they embark on their journey in football away from Liverpool, meaning we're going to have to build a whole new core at this Liverpool club. We are quite literally taking the heart out. Klopp, Van Dijk and Salah all gone and Liverpool are ready for the rebuild. Well, we're going to be trying to take them to treble winners, the Champions League, the Premier League and the FA Cup all in one season. So join me as we rebuild Liverpool on FM24. And while Football Manager does predict a little bit of a fall off in the second half of the season for Liverpool as Manchester City go ahead and run away with the league as they always do in the second half of the season, they are still qualifying for the Champions League on 78 points and finish in third place and in Klopp's last ever season they go ahead and win the Europa League and the Carabao Cup meaning two more trophies to add to the ridiculous amount Klopp has won at Liverpool and even coming from a United fan he is a fantastic manager and has rebuilt a club that were you know down where pretty much United are right pretty much this season club not looking in the greatest of places to being one of the best in the world yet again and he's done that now rebuilding a team as obviously we thought a couple of years ago Klopp was going to be you know presenting getting sacked middle of last season to you know a fantastic summer window just gone rebuilding the club very very well but you know players like Wataru Endo coming in and absolutely smashing it to now being top of the Premier League and absolutely smashing it so we're going to be looking to uh, take over from Klopp and see if we can take Liverpool to that next step but that is going to be without superstar captain centre back uh, Virgil van Dijk because he is the best centre back on FM and it would be very easy if we were to keep both himself and obviously the Egyptian king Mohamed Salah at the club again one of the best players in FM and uh, there is slight rumours that both of them will be leaving with Klopp at the end of this season. So I thought to make this rebuild a little bit harder than just coming in and be Liverpool manager with Salah and Van Dijk. We'll be looking to sell them both and uh, bring in players that are going to hopefully be linked to Liverpool in real life. Now we are going to be using a very good tactic, which is based around the Xabi Alonso 3-4-3, which is very, very exciting because Xabi Alonso is the most you know sought after manager for Liverpool. So we're looking to use this sort of style, the three central defenders, the complete wing back on the right, the wing back on the left, the register and the deep line playmaker in DM with two attacking midfielders and an advanced forward up front. And there is one player which is heavily, heavily spoken about at the moment in Connor Bradley. And we've been looking to lock him in that right back position for the first season. Now his stats on a football manager aren't quite as good as he looks in real life. He looks absolutely fantastic and FM doesn't give him the credit that he deserves. He's only a good championship player and potentially a Premier League player. Well, he is absolutely smashing that out of the park at the moment. And in the upcoming winter update, I imagine we're going to see Connor Bradley with a big old boost. But that does also mean that we're going to be able to play Trent Alexander-Arnold in the register role in DM, which is very, very exciting. Because it not only means that we can get Connor Bradley into the team, but we're going to see Trent in a completely different role as what we have seen him in real life. And the register is a very sort of different role in DM and something which a lot of people don't end up tend to using uh, as we read it from FM. Uh, it's a more aggressive version of the deep line playmaker for possession oriented systems that press high the pitch giving complete freedom to dictate play from deep positions now if that is not Trent Alexander-Arnold built down to an absolute T I don't know what is so I am very excited to see what that right sided partnership can go ahead and do and using Xabi Ball we're going to be looking to try and bring in a few players from by Leverkusen as well who here on FM this season finished just second place behind Bayern Munich eventually falling off uh, after you know being top of the league for pretty much the whole season end up losing five games in the second half of the season which is a a little bit heartbreaking but there is some players in this team which I certainly have my eye on I mean if we were looking for a brand new right back Jeremy Franklin would be number one but we are certainly going to be using Connor Bradley in this one Florian Verts is a cam which is going to be wanted worldwide this summer if he can stay fit for the second half of the season and their centre backs are also very very good we have got quite a lot of money Liverpool already 140 million and 165k in wage budget and also selling someone like Van Dijk and Mohamed Salah that should add about another 100 million especially with the sort of the Saudi Arabian money here on foot manager so money shouldn't be an issue this summer we're going to be looking to rebuild them in a semi-realistic way bringing in players which Liverpool have sort of done in real life younger players with very good prospects and uh, seeing if we can take them to the next level at this Liverpool team so let's get into the summer transfer window see where Salah and Van Dijk end up going and see who bring in to replace them and to build this fantastic 3 for 3 system so Mohamed Salah has gone to join Sadio Mane and Cristiano Ronaldo over at Al Nassar which 
must now be the best front three in world football, all playing in Saudi Arabia. We managed to get £95 million for him, which, I mean, it's probably about what they'd get from him in real life if he was to go. I personally don't think he will go this season. But if he does, £100 million for a 32-year-old winger, I don't think it's the end of the world. And over in Saudi Arabia, he's earning £1.7 million. So you've got to respect the bag. He is going over to get paid. And Virgil van Dijk has also gone over to Saudi Arabia, where he is earning £1.5 million pounds which is again absolutely ridiculous forming a partnership i believe with kalidou kulabali and eddie mendy in goal now for van dijk we were only able to get 15 million pounds which is frustrating but like i said money isn't really the issue and both of them sales i mean 110 million pound i'd have taken that at the start if you told me if it was 60 and 60 or whatever so i'm not too fussed about getting rid of both of them like i said that was sort of the point of this rebuild i personally don't think both of them will go this summer i think there's a chance they both could go ahead and leave with club but if they don't you know that rebuild gets a hell of a lot easier. So here on FM, we're making it harder. We're selling the two best players. And they weren't the only two players to go ahead and leave. Diego Jota has also left the club to go ahead and join Real Madrid. Now with the sale of Salah, it would have been clever to keep someone like Jota around. But I had my own ideas and Diego Jota didn't quite fit into them. I think he's much better off the left and the right and can't really do it in that central cam spot. So we're not going to be looking to keep him at the club. We're going to be bringing in a replacement for him. And uh, with the system we're playing with this sort of Xabi Alonso ball, he doesn't really fit it so goodbye Diego Jota but 50 million pounds off to Real Madrid again I think he's a fantastic player in real life but we're going to take the money we can get for him and someone like Thiago leaving to Al Hilal as well supplying three different Saudi teams uh 29 million pounds is what we went ahead and got for a 33 year old Spanish international which is pretty much constantly injured this season especially in real life in fact I think as I'm recording this on the 8th of February he's injured again so I mean it makes sense if we can get 30 million quid for him we'll say goodbye to Thiago and that is the big outgoings done, which meant we had a hell of a lot of money to go ahead and bring in some players. And I mentioned Florian Verts was my number one target. So we went ahead and picked him up from Bayer Leverkusen. His stats on FM are simply ridiculous. He's got unbelievable dribbling, unbelievable first touch, flair, determination. Physical stats are brilliant as well. When if it wasn't for that injury, uh, where I think he'd done his ACL a couple of years ago. I mean, where was it? The damaged cruciate ligaments for nine months he was injured in 2022. If it wasn't for that, I think he'd generally be spoken about right now as one of the best players in the world with the likes of Jude Bellingham and Jamal Musiala. I think he is absolutely fantastic and hopefully we can get the best out of him on here on FM as well. And obviously playing the Jabby Ball system, one of the roles is built for Florian Verts. So he's going to slot in to this team very nicely. And the one placement we brought in for Virgil van Dijk is going to be Antonio Silva. He is a 20-year-old Portuguese centre-back who you will all know and love. He is fantastic on FIFA. He is fantastic here on FM as well. And he is just 20 years of age he costs us a grand total of 43 million pounds and again his stats are incredibly incredibly well rounded and uh i think he can come in and try and replace someone like van dyke he's got great pace he's great on the ball and he's extremely consistent and his value on fm is already up to 87 million after that move from benfica here to liverpool so very happy to get him in as well to play the right side of center back role i wanted someone which could you know, move up and down the right-hand side alongside Connor Bradley and offer that with him, as well as a centre-back, which is going to be very, very strong. So signing in Lutsharel Getrudia from Feyenoord was an absolute no-brainer because he can play centre-back, he can play right-back, he can play right-wing-back, he can play in DM also. So he can do all the ball-playing abilities, he can do all the crossing abilities, and he's incredibly good defensively. And as a wide centre-back on uh, support, you know, he suits it down to the ground. He's very quick, he's six foot tall, blue stats pretty much all across the board he absolutely loves big matches and he's extremely consistent he's 23 years of age he's dutch and he cost us 55 million pounds which while being extremely pricey you know bringing in another center back to add to this already very decent liverpool core i think was pretty much needed so welcome in gertrude uh, and our second to last signing and pretty much from here it's backups is one as a backup to connor bradley and this time it's festi ebostile this guy come through the derby uh well i knew of him at derby where he joined in a free contract from bray Wanderers ended up going to Udinese in Italy on a free transfer. Has had two semi decent seasons over in Italy, so we picked him up for 8.5 million. I didn't want someone to be absolutely fantastic in this position because I want Connor Bradley to be our starter and he's going to be locked in in that role as well. So, someone that's happy to be a backup, a good young player with fantastic pace and would suit it if Connor Bradley got injured is Festi Obaselli. So, welcome in Everselli to the team. And the last signing is our third centre back signing as Liverpool don't have the most centre backs for a two back system, let alone a three back system. 
system. So 19-year-old Alan Maturo is a Uruguayan international centre-back. He is uh, six foot two. He is 15 million pounds signed from Genoa as they signed him for just 2.5 million from Defence or Sporting a few years back. And he looks absolutely brilliant. Again, six foot two, very good on his left foot, which is quite rare as a defender to have a left-footed centre-back. So that's quite exciting. Very good on the ball, very good defensively. Lip lacks a little bit of uh, sort of consistency, which is a little bit annoying, but hopefully we can iron that out of Alan Maturo. And I mean, it leaves the actual team looking like so. It's quite nice to see the team in this system. It's Alisson in goal, Gertrudia at right centre-back, Canate at left centre-back with Silva in that middle centre-back role. Connor Bradley at right wing-back, Andy Robertson at left wing-back, McAllister as a deep-line playmaker on support next to Trent on a register on attack. Oh, on support, sorry. is a very attacking central defensive mid partnership, but one that I think we can use to dominate games. Dominic Sabozlai is one of the best players in Liverpool right now, so he suits that attack with supporter on the right-hand side with Florian Verts on the left-hand side with Darwin Nunes as the striker up front. He's going to get the nod for this season. I need him to have a big season this season or there will be a replacement brought in. The backups, again, I think we've done very well at strengthening in the correct position. So Keller has the backup keeper to Ellison. Uh, Joe Gomez, Joel Matip, Maturo as the backup centre-backs. Ebersile as the backup right-back with Simicast the backup left-back. Endo and Curtis Jones, the backup DMs with Harvey Elliott, Luis Diaz as the backup cams and Cody Gakpo as the backup striker. Now, Luis Diaz could do the striker role. Gakpo could do the striker role. Gakpo can also play in cams. We might get some games there. And Nathan Phillips, Sepp van der Berg, Stefan Bajetic and Fabio Cavallo are all staying at the club as well. And in terms of loan people going out, Ryan Gravenberch has gone to Wolves on a loan deal to see if he can go ahead and kickstart his Premier League career. And a few youngsters also going out on loan. We have still got so much money we could go and spend two million pounds in wage budget and 150 million pounds in transfer budget but again without making this rebuild ridiculously easy and just going aside and Bappe and Jude Bellingham we're going to try and do it in a semi-realistic way so let's see how we're going to get on in this first season as Liverpool manager well would you believe it our first game in charge as Liverpool manager was in the Premier League away against Manchester City at the Etihad where we absolutely bottled it and Trent in his brand new CDM role gave the ball to Bernardo Silva and we lost 1-0 so the Premier League campaign got off to the worst possible start three points down of Man City already but we quickly gained back some momentum and as we head now into the sort of the end of the first half of the season into December we were looking very very strong on a strong run of form and Joe Gomez got us off to a fantastic start here against West Ham before McAllister found Gertrudia at the back stick to make things 2-0 in the first half West Ham, though, weren't quite done there. And Saeed Benrahma gets in on goal against Alisson and bags it home to make it 2-1. But there's a reason we're showing this game because we were absolutely fantastic and put this game to bed with Darwin Nunes with his goal number one. They're battering it in off the crossbar to make it 3-1. And Florian Verts finding Fabio Carvalho, a great overlapping run by Conor Bradley as he gets into the box, finds Darwin Nunes, and he makes it 4-1 for a very convincing victory against West Ham. And just a month later, we face up against Manchester City again. Of course, this time time at Anfield and it was a fantastic Rabana cross from Watara Endo to find Sir Bosley in a 1-0 victory. We have to watch that goal again because it is very rare we see a Rabana like this on Football Manager but Endo was the man. What a ball in and Sir Bosley pokes at home past Edison for a 1-0 victory against Manchester City and we were currently sitting top of the league. We had to turn our attention to the Champions League however and we got through an easy knockoff play round against Benfica before facing up against Inter Milan where Cody Gakpo got us off to a fantastic start here at Anfield and well Inter Milan got a great goal back with some lovely build up play to Ram knocking it past Alisson Becker we go ahead into the second half with Zabozlai penalty making it 2-1 at Anfield and ready to go to the San Siro to see if we can get a result against Inter Milan to take us all the way to the quarterfinals in the Champions League and get this treble winning season off to a fantastic start but that would have been far too easy so to Ram got the ball up to La Torre Martinez, Martinez and he finds a fantastic ball through to the Vide Fratesi to make it 2-2 when Aggregate and Pavard finds Barella to get a ball back into Pavard into Hakantelanolu to find DeMarco on the left-hand side to make it 3-2 to Inter Milan and they were in charge of this tie. Simicas finds Curtis Jones deep line playmaker finding Simicas again. He's going to get a ball in the box and Florian Verts a fantastic run in the first half to make this game 2-2 3-3 uh, sorry on Aggregate and uh, we went all the way to penalties and so Bosley 
five got us off to an awful start, missing the first penalty. Tadanolu put them one goal ahead. McAllister got one back for us. Lautaro Martinez stepped up and put it past Alison Becker. Trent Alexander Arnold steps up, blasts it home, and things were looking good. Petkovic for Inter Milan. We just can not save one. So Gakpo stepped up. Sommer with the save. Simakas stepped up, and he missed as well. And Inter Milan were champions in the round of 16 in the Champions League, which means the treble isn't happening this season. While that was absolutely heartbreaking to not be going through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, Watara Wendo got us off to an unbelievable start in the FA Cup semi-finals before Gertrudia knocked home the first corner of this game before Saboslai whipped it into the back stick and Joel Matip got us up 3-0 in the FA Cup semi-final, setting up against Chelsea of all teams in FA Cup final, just like the Carabao Cup this year. And just two minutes in, we could not have got off to a better start. Rhys James absolutely bottling it. Robertson dropping it back to McAllister to make it 1-0 and we got off to an even better start because 40 minutes in, Canate finds Bradley down the right-hand side. He strikes home to get his goal with an FA Cup final for Liverpool. But it wasn't all done yet. In the 47th minute as we kicked off, the uh, well, finished off the first half, Lukaku got Chelsea a goal back of all players. Lukaku back at Chelsea. And the 50th minute, Chill whips it in for an Enzo Fernandez volley at the back stick to make it 2-2. And we headed to dreaded penalties again. McAllister got us off to a good start, getting us a goal ahead before Zelensky pegs us back. Trent steps up and scores again. So far, not a miss for either teams, especially as Nick Jackson bags that one. But that all comes to an end here with Fabio Carvalho having his saved by Kepa. But Allison stepped up and saved Reese James, meaning it's still 2-2. Endo bags home for 3-2. Mudrick steps up for Chelsea. You'd like to think he would miss. But of course, he scores that one. Canate blasts at home for 4-3. Sterling for 4-all. The game was going to go all the way to the wire. Robertson smacks it home for 5 and that was that because for some reason FM isn't going to show us. But Chilwell <laughs> missed up the next penalty. I don't know why it's not showing us that. That is so anticlimactic. But we go ahead and win the FA Cup final. So we have gone ahead and lifted a trophy this season. And the Carabao Cup wasn't to be. We got knocked out in the third round by Notts Forest. And the Champions League obviously getting quarterfinal by Inter Milan was very disappointing. But we were doing very well in the Premier League last time I showed you. And that's because we went all the way on to win it and get the title back to Liverpool. Now, obviously, Liverpool won the league in the COVID season where there was no fans in the end of the 20, uh, not 2019, 2020 season. So this time Liverpool were able to lift the trophy in front of their beloved fan base on 80 points, 23 wins, 11 draws and four losses. Quite a low point score in tally, but that won't bother anyone. A title nonetheless and a fantastic season. We were nowhere to be seen on goal scored because we were simply just very, very good defensively with 22 clean sheets eight, no, six more than anyone else and uh, eight more goals less conceded than the second best team in Aston Villa. A little bit worried about our lack of goals, just 1.47 goals per game and 0.63 conceded per game. And as we look at the actual squads, and the players, uh, there's a reason for that because Darwin Nunes, as our star striker, only scored 14 goals. And while he's a fantastic striker in real life, the exact same issues seem to crop up here in Football Manager. A 19.3 XG scoring just 14 goals is just not good enough at a club where we're trying to win the treble. So we are going to be looking to bring in a brand new striker this summer. It's quite freaky how Darwin Nunes gets into such good positions so, so often, but just can't finish it home a little bit. But like my striker, Rasmus Hoyland, he started to find the net, but still gets a lot of chances and misses quite a few. And Darwin Nunes, FM, seems to have got him down to an absolute T. Nearly a 20 XG and 14 goals I've never seen before. Uh, so quite a disappointing season, just a 6.82 average rating. And no one else really stepped up. We obviously sold Mo Salah and sold the other bagsman in Diego Jota. So all, showed, all, all of the goals were on the shoulders of Darwin Nunes and Cody Gakpo, who scored 13 in 2. McAllister scored 13 in 8. And Saboslai scored 12 in 10. Florian Verts had another nice injury. Of course he did. So scored 10 goals and 3 assists. And our next best goal scorer was our superstar young right back, Connor Bradley, who had a fairly decent season, a 6.88, obviously chucked in to be in a sort of a starting Premier League player when he's really not good enough on FM, which again, like I said, is a big old shame. I think he's going to get a beautiful big old boost uh, in the winter update. So it's a little bit of a shame to see him not absolutely smashing it, which he will do in a month's time on FM, but still he is our superstar right back and he is going to be staying there as well. His stats are progressing a little bit. He's quick. He can't really cross on this FM, which is annoying, but he scores in FM. 
FA Cup finals. And that's the key thing. He pops up in big, big moments. And a Trent playing in that DM role actually was very, very good. Two goals and seven assists with a 7.1 average rating. And is now a fluent CDM. He's better as a playmaker, which is quite interesting. But good to see that he is absolutely smashing the new role as well. So hopefully we can see him for years to come. Go ahead and dominate that DM spot. And we've got 68 million pounds to go ahead and spend in terms of transfer budget as well. And of course, a hell of a lot of wage budget. Nearly two million pounds to go ahead and spend. So signing should be plentiful this summer as we look to take the step up from, you know, set round of 16 of the Champions League and you knocked out in the Carabao Cup and just about winning the league to absolutely dominate in the league, winning the Champions League, winning the FA Cup, winning the Carabao Cup. The Community Shield would be nice, as would the Super Cup, although we're not going to win that one. So we're not in that. So we'll get as many trophies as we can for next season. Hopefully tick off the treble because, I mean, we've done a very good job so far, you know, keeping as title challenges in fact winning the league it was helped by Manchester City dropping off but it'll be nice to take a big old step to being a dominant side and winning absolutely everything so let's see what signs we make for season two a very very quick interruption from myself I just want to mention the video that is coming out this Sunday it is a rebuild versus rebuild the first on the channel and is myself against the legendary tactic creator of Josh Daly it's going to be out on Sunday at 12 noon so get ready to watch it it is the best video I've ever created and it's full of laughs full of banter and it's honestly absolutely brilliant so give it a watch sunday at 12 o'clock so we've sold our superstar of last season with taro Endo, to chelsea for 12 and a half million pounds because as much as he's done very well in the match engine as much as he's consistent and he loves big matches he's just not quite good enough to make us a champions league winning side so goodbye to mr endo and that's pretty much our only big sale the only other one is fabio carvalho leaving to her for berlin for four and a half million pounds he was a backup cam last year and to be honest got in the way of harvey elliott's uh, growth so we said goodbye to him and simicast has left to join barcelona for 31 million pounds to be fair you know getting quite a lot of money for him is quite nice so we've got a big old transfer kitty to go ahead and spend but we only went ahead and brought in three players and brand new striker and cover star Gonzalo Ramos is number one he has fantastic finishing fantastic determination fantastic decision making and unbelievable physicals either footed can play striker can play cam I'm worried that he's a bit too similar to Darwin Nunes, but he is also the player I wanted to bring in because I think it's quite a realistic sign-in. Not absolutely smashing it at PSG. Probably going to be the star man when uh, Mbappe leaves, but we're going to take him just before he goes ahead and does that. He was okay for PSG last season, just nine goals in 19 games and hardly played. So for £2 million more, we picked him off their hands. And, and like I said, looks absolutely brilliant. I'm excited to see what Gonzalo Ramos can go ahead and do for us. I think he could be a superstar. He he could be a bit of a flop. We'll see what he can do. But 65 million quid is not only been spent on him, but also spent on our brand new DM to replace Wataru Endo in Xavi Guerrero. He is a 22-year-old Spanish central defense midfielder that is heavily linked to a big move in this summer because he has been absolutely smashing it at Valencia recently. He's got fantastic first touch, work rate, and vision. He's already a good Premier League player. Could become one of the best in the league as well. He is extremely consistent and he loves big matches. And like I said, 60 65 million pounds is not too bad sitting next to Trent in DM is going to be a very very exciting CDM partnership and the only other signing is a backup left back to Andy Robertson in Vanderland signed from Palmeiras a bargain fee of just four million pounds Simicas out for 30 this guy in for four enabled us to bring in a superstar striker and DM with a sale of Simicas and bringing a left back leaves the team in a much better situation than I think that it was in last season with Allison in goal Gertrudia Antonio Silva and Canada at centre back with Bradley at right back, Trent and Xavi Guerrero in DM, Robbo at left back, Saboslai, Vert and Ramos as the front three, Kelleher, Joe Gomez, Belmatip, Maturo, Ebia Sile and Gitter Vanderland as the backup defenders, McAllister and Curtis Jones, the backup DMs of Gakpo, Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes as the backup you know, front three, which is very, very strong with uh, Graven Birch, Seven Bayetic, Harvey Elliott and Ben Doak all in the first team as well, hopefully contributing some minutes to this season. Like I mentioned I won the Premier League I won the Champions League I won the FA Cup they're the three I care about getting that treble over the line this season I think is certainly possible we just need to go ahead and score some more goals so let's see if we can do it well if we are going to go ahead and win a treble we need to kick the season off in a much better way than we did here 
getting absolutely battered by Aston Villa in the Community Shield. Medi Taremi getting them off to a fantastic start before Tyro Mings puts it home for 2 0. It wasn't all over and wasn't all bad for us as Gertrude. A burst down the right hand side to set back Curtis Jones. A ball in to our brand new CDM, Xavi Guerrero, to make it 2 1. But Aston Villa also were not done. And Ramsey in behind to Gianluca Scamacca, who pops it home for 3 1. And our season got off to an awful start of a 3 1 loss in the pre-season tournament of the Community Shield. However, we did not take that form into the Premier League as just a month later, we faced off against our old friends Aston Villa again and we wanted a little bit of payback for what happened at Wembley. So McAllister got us off to a fantastic start before Trent whipped in an unbelievable ball for Darwin Nunes to knock home for 2-0, who has got the nod at the start of this season. Robertson whips in a ball back stick to Canate to put it home for 3-0 with 40 minutes and just before half-time, we fancied another a Curtis Jones screamer to make it 4-0 and a fifth was quickly coming just after the second half had started. Robertson on the left-hand side finds Trent on the right-hand side. Them two linking up again is lovely to see and we took the foot off the gas and in the 92nd minute, Villa got one back. Celebrate all you like. An absolute battering against last season's second best team, Aston Villa, in the Premier League. A 5-1 victory and we weren't done there either because we're facing up against our rivals Everton here at Anfield and McAllister gets us off to a fantastic start from the penalty spot. And in the 75th minute, it was still only 1-0. Xavi Guerrero has something to say about that. Blast one home from 30 yards. And just two minutes later, some lovely link-up play. Verts finding Trent into Zaboslai makes it 3-0. And right at the death, why not rubbing in a little bit more? Trent in the right-hand side. Flicks the ball into Canate. Back to Trent. Whips the ball in. Darwin Nunes. Darwizzi himself for 4-0 against Everton. So a 5-1 battering against the second-best team in the league last season and a 4-0 battering against our bitter rivals Everton the season was off to a great start but while Manchester City tried to pick us back at the Etihad with a one goal victory the reverse fixture back at Anfield showed just who was better with ourselves getting a 1-0 victory at Anfield right at the end of the season and that was enough to make us Premier League champions on 84 points and Darwin Nunes stepped up this season to be the superstar striker he just needed a little push 23 goals Goals. Andy Robertson with 15 assists and a 7.35 average rating. And as we head to the team stats, I mean, clean sheets were just so good here at Liverpool. Again, 23 clean sheets, just 23 goals conceded. And rather than not even being on the list at all last season, this season, we were very creative. 79 goals. We absolutely smashed it in the league. A 0.61 XG scoring 2.08 goals. And our superstar player was Darwin Nunes. 37 goals completed compared to last season 14. XG, he had 25.5. Darwin Nunes has learned to score goals. It is a fantastic revelation. Alex McAllister with 17 goals and 5 assists. Gonzalo Ramos as the backup. 14 goals and 3 assists is very, very impressive in just 18 starts. So Bosley 12 and 14, but our superstar Andy Robertson overall 24 assists. Trent with 10 assists as well. And it does look like I left it up to the match engine to decide who was going to play in that right back spot. But that didn't mean that uh, Conor Bradley didn't get any starts. Still started 24 games and 24 off the bench with six assists and again this season has taken a big old step up to being a very decent Premier League right back and if you guys want to do uh, pick this save up on Patreon it is available in the link down below and you can use Connor Bradley as a decent Liverpool player and a pickup from this 2026 season or whenever we finish this rebuild that is all going to be down in the description down below and a massive thank you the legends that have been running down the screen you guys are literally helping change my life but that's enough rambling we're here to win trophies so how are we going to go ahead and get on in the Carabao Cup final against Fulham. Cody Gagpo ended up getting us off into absolute dreamland. A great ball in behind from Curtis Jones who has really stood out in this rebuild as a fantastic central defence midfielder and we're going to go ahead and capitalise on an awful defensive mistake and Sabozlai pokes home for 2-0 but Fulham were not done yet. Tete on the right hand side finds Adama who we all know is an incredible hand through and Andreas Pereira bursts through to make it 2-1 but that was all Fulham had in the tank and we had 
had gone ahead and lifted the Carabao Cup, meaning the Premier League and the Carabao Cup was won. It doesn't really count towards the treble because for me, the treble is the FA Cup, the Premier League and the Champions League. But certainly a nice one to tick off the list is that one. But we were also in finals of another trophy. And this time it was the FA Cup against Arsenal, where our so-called backup striker got us off to a fantastic start. A ridiculous ball from Andy Robertson found Gonzalo Ramos beating the offside trap and blasting at home behind uh, Aaron Ramsdale and Trent in that DM role again finds Florian Verts who finds Ramos who bursts through the defence again and puts it home past Ramsdale for 2-0 in the first half but just before the ref was about to blow his whistle Martinelli got the left hand side cuts inside and blasts it home for 2-1 and uh, they weren't done there either because the 57th minute Timber bursting down I keep saying bursting it's the new go ahead uh, goes to the right hand side finds Odegaard he pokes at home for 2 all, and you never guess what it's penalties and you never guess what we missed our first one you never guess what they missed their first one as well Javi Guerrero finally put a team underway with a goal there from the penalty spot and Odegaard puts it back to make it 1-1 Trent stepped up to make it 2-1 to ourselves and taps over for Arsenal stepped up to make it 2-2 before Gakpo decided to miss and Ramsdale saved it before Trossard decided to miss and Allison saved it. It's going to come down to who has got the better keeper. Antonio Silva puts it in for us. Inketia scores for them and uh, Gertrudia steps up for ourselves, blasts it home and uh, we're not going to see the missing penalty again just like season number one but we do go ahead and win on penalties as Cancelo of all players misses for Arsenal in the FA Cup final. So the Premier League is done. The FA Cup is done and I tell you what we made quite a good run of the Champions League as well when we got all the way to the semi-finals and of course faced up against our bitter rivals Manchester City Darwin Nunes however was on absolute fire and he blasts one home from the edge of the box to make it 1-0 and Bajetic found Gertrudia to find Ramos to find Darwin to go in again and Darwin has found his shooting boots to make it 2-0 However, Manchester City also have quite a good striker of their own. And while there was calls for offside, Erling Haaland's turned into an absolute robot, blasts through the challenge of Antonio Silva and makes it 2-1 in the leg at Etihad, meaning we had to take it back to Anfield and stay strong. Do you think we could do that? Because I certainly do. We were absolutely fantastic in this one as Darwin Nunes just ended up taking the absolute mick out of Edison, the cheeky chip over him. And while, you know, a classic Liverpool counter-attack with Festival Ebiasile finding Dominic Sabozlai was underway. 2-0 in this one and 4-1 on aggregate. Vandalin playing at left centre-back in this game with Robertson on the left-hand side finds Darwin again who just is on a goal-scoring rampage to make it 5-1 and at Man City, you, you might go ahead and get one back from Carl Walker with a good ball in hits the post, falls to Haaland. The Haaland versus Darwin Nunes show. Darwin Nunes absolutely smoked him but there was one more team left in our way. Of course, it was the Parisians, Paris Saint-Germain. There was only one player that could go ahead and score the only goal in a Champions League final. A deflection full fell to Gonzalo Ramos, who poked the ball home in the 49th minute in the only goal of the game. And Gonzalo Ramos scores the goal for Liverpool to become Champions League winners. And as we look over the competition screen, not only are we Champions League winners, we are quadruple winners Premier League Champions League FA Cup and Carabao Cup the rebuild is over like I said this rebuild could have been a hell of a lot easier if we kept Salah and Van Dijk it still wasn't that difficult with you know a few decent signings and using our brain a little bit we tried different things with Connor Bradley starting a right back with Trent moving into DM to make the rebuild even harder but genuinely this Liverpool team is so close to already being one of the best teams in the world and for Liverpool fans watching this still at this point Klopp might be leaving and there is a chance of Salah and Van Dijk leaving but we have shown here today and foot manager in a you know not a real universe that the squad is still very very good and you are just two three four probably even one or two signings away from being the best team in the world yet again so hang yourselves you know hang yourselves tight you'll get there you're gonna be fine about Jurgen Klopp as I have shown if this is your first time on the channel there is a video recommended by YouTube to go ahead and watch and I recommend you go ahead and watch that one it is an absolute banger and I'm sure you'll enjoy it Make sure you're ready for Sunday because Sunday we're going to change the rebuild world on YouTube.